The following is a presentation of TFNN, The Trader's Edge, with your host, Steve Rose. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters out there. Welcome to the Tuesday edition, not just Tuesday edition, the terrific Tuesday edition of The Trader's Edge. Thanks so much for joining me, folks. I absolutely love being here with you. Hopefully, you're off to a uh, terrific start of your Tuesday. If not, just change it in a heartbeat. Just change your focus, folks. If we take a look at the uh, focus of the uh, markets here, relatively flat this morning, especially after a day like you had in the markets yesterday. Dow futures flat down maybe about three points. ES Mini up about uh, 25 cents. You got the NASDAQ up about uh, $2 and 50 cents. The uh, Russell 2000 up 70 cents out there. King Dollar up 21 ticks. Gold trading off eight bucks out at 1580. You got silver down uh, 51 cents this morning, trading out at 2827. Light Sweet crude off 30 cents. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. A quick tour of uh, Europe. You've got the DAX up 68 points, the FTSE up 61, the Nikkei closed out up 95 points last night. Just doing a little bit of a bounce there. It has made the Nikkei, I believe. We'll go take a look at it. Did make an A to B equals CD pattern. Got down to the 0.786 area, but it is that Japanese yen U.S. dollar currency pair that says that uh, Japan, the Nikkei, wants to head to the November 25th lows out there. You had the Hang Seng up about six-tenths of a percent last night, up 116 points uh, over in, uh, in, in uh, let's see, Italy here. You've got uh, Spain. You've got the Ibex up 82 points right now. You know, our markets were up pretty big yesterday, wouldn't you say? You had the uh, Russell 2000 up two and three-tenths percent, the uh, composite up Two and four tenths percent. The Dow up well, a little over a percent. S and P's up one and six tenths. Again, our call number is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. And today, not only is it terrific Tuesday, it's a, a three planetary index date today. We had a two planetary index date on Friday last week. We had a new moon. Uh, we had a, a super uh, new moon, if you will, and that's always one super, as much as you did have the solar eclipse, the ring of fire. Actually, saw some uh, great pictures. If you haven't seen some pictures, maybe just go to your web browser and put in, uh, you know, yesterday or uh, Saturday or Sunday's uh, new moon out there. There's some great uh, photos of it. Uh, they saw it in places like Australia and Asia uh, and, uh, you know, some other spots, maybe even in Mexico. Nah, I, I don't think they saw it in, in Mexico, but they did certainly see it around the world. We didn't see it here in the United States, unfortunately. But you also had apogee where the moon is the uh, lunar. It's a lunar phase where the moon is the furthest from us. So, you know, in a five-day period of time, folks, we've got it all. And certainly in the markets yesterday, you had a little bit of a bounce. But yesterday, before I get into the markets, you know, they're relatively flat, and you can always give me a call we can take a look at something you'd like to to look at as well and you can always watch us on tiger tv all you have to do is go to the home page at tfn.com click on the tiger tv button you'll be able to see us live we absolutely love everybody that's listening to on the listening to us right now on the radio thank you so much for doing that you can always catch an archive of the show on channel nine that way you'll be able to take a look at the charts that uh, we flash up on the screen right now the chart that we've got on the screen is the ES Mini, the 30-minute chart. And I'm going to absolutely teach you something today. That's really, you know, one of the things that it's all about. And yesterday, you know, and it's not just a, well, the markets are nothing more than patterns. It's uh, just like you, you know, you went to work, you, you probably have very similar patterns that you do almost every Tuesday of every week. And so the markets are nothing more than a participant to folks that have those same patterns out there. And yesterday just simply was talking, you know, so one of my patterns is, is to talk about other elements of just life. Yesterday was talking about really the magic keys. And the magic keys, folks, I was focusing on the, on the word discipline. And so when you take a look at it being the magic keys, you know, maybe there's more than just one key. You know, if you've got a key ring, there's not just one key on your key ring. And so that first key to discipline, the first key, folks, is awareness. You know, especially, especially discipline to be able to make changes in your life. You know, take a moment and think about whether it's your trading that you're doing or anything else that, that you've got going on. You know, see things the way they are. So go take a look at whatever it is you're doing. Go take a look at your life and become aware of the changes that you need to make. Why do you need to make changes? We're always making change. The market's always making change. Changes don't mean a bad thing. Changes are growth. It's all about growth, folks. And so figure out how is it that your life can even grow even further. I mean, ask these questions. What will it take? You know, what must I do and what must I become to get all that you want from life? To get all that you want from life, folks. There's no reason why you can't get every single thing that you want 
All you've got to do is decide to be disciplined. That's one of the magic keys, just simply becoming aware. Let me give you three keys this morning, and then we'll go on to the markets. The second key, folks, pretty simple key. It's that key of willingness. Simple key. But, folks, you've got to be able to make those massive, take some massive action in your life. Perhaps even more so than just willingness, it's just simply that eagerness to want to be able to maintain that new discipline. Maybe it's a new discipline on learning A to B equals CD patterns. Like I was able to teach, you know, 40 uh, traders, investors on uh, Friday when we did our all day uh, workshop. You know, absolutely showed them time and time again. Sent out a video yesterday showing them, you know, the uh, the latest A to B equals CD pattern that had uh, set up. And just simply following the disciplined rules that we took a look at on Friday, I gave everybody the opportunity to catch a move if they wanted to. And it's all about the willingness and becoming eager, folks, to be able to maintain those disciplines in your life. So we've got two keys, right? We've got the awareness key and we've got the eagerness or willingness key. That third key, folks, that's going to be on our key ring is that... That, that, that key to being commitment. You want to be able to commit to being able to master those things in your life. And it's that means, folks, that you can't become a dabbler and you can't become a stressor. Dabblers, we know what they do. They see something. They're interested in it. They do it. And the first time they get to a hurdle, they absolutely just say, you know, it's not as easy as I thought it is. So dabblers just simply, and we've all dabbled at things in our life. And then you've got stressors. Stressors go one step further, folks. What stressors do is they say, ah, I know I can do this. They go out there, they grab all kinds of resources, whether it's books, materials, training, and they get maybe a little bit of coaching, a little bit of coaching, they get a little bit further running that second hurdle, that second wall, and they say, now nah, they just give up. Masters, folks, and that's what I want you to be do. I want you to be do. <laughs> I got a master speaking the English language. That's what I want you to be able to do and master whatever it is that you want in life. And masters expect that they're going to run into hurdles. Masters expect that they're going to run into a brick wall. Masters expect that you're going to have patterns, and they're going to be patterns of change, folks. And I want you to be able to do that. I want you to commit to mastery in anything that you have in your life, anything that you want to be able to do in your life. Because, well, folks, when you can do that, you're just simply, that becomes that set of magic keys. I might find a few others out there. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Always love to hear from you. You know, folks, I'll leave it like this, and then we'll go to the markets here. A new discipline, whatever discipline it is that you want. So Friday I taught folks about a discipline. Love to be able to teach you that discipline as well. But a new discipline can alter your life direction, and it can do it in a heartbeat. You can't change your destination immediately, folks, but you can absolutely change your direction. The markets prove that to us time and time again. Is it going to continue to change? Is it going to change direction today with it being a three planetary index state? Is it going to continue to motor on? Is this now the new bottom that's in out there? Folks, not even close. Not even close to close. Maybe the market's going to go ahead and move up, but my opinion, and it is my opinion in studying charts, folks, that we are in a nasty bear market out there. You can expect rallies like the one that you saw yesterday may continue today or the next day, but there is no momentum behind it. It is normal. In fact, I'll share one thing with you that I shared with my subscribers this morning. That's this. Yesterday, what was always interesting is this. And here's what I when I, when I, when I finally got to, uh, turn on the TV, I was turning on, wanted to watch the New York Ranger, uh, uh, New Jersey Nets, uh, New Jersey Nets, uh, New Jersey Devil game. Great hockey game last night. They've got it all tied up in the series 2-2. Maybe this is going to go to a game seven. Boy, I'd love to be up in that New York, New Jersey area catching all of these games. But as I was tuning in and I was flipping through the channels, you know, they were talking about just simply that this was the, yesterday was the best day of 2012 in the markets. Highest point gains. It would almost have made anybody that was listening say to themselves, hmm, maybe the move to the downside is over, because that's certainly what everybody was saying. Well, folks, those folks were not look, taking a look at charts. They were not familiar with history. Are you one that believes that patterns go on and on on a consistent basis? Do you believe that there are repeating patterns in your life or somebody else's life or in the markets? I certainly do. Well, here's the pattern, folks. In a bear market, you don't have days like, uh, or in a bull market, you don't have days like yesterday. In fact, in a bear market, you do. If you go take a look at 2007 top, all the way down to the 2009 lows, folks, what you will find is 10, 10 out of the last 20 highest point gain moves, highest percentage moves happened during that bear market leg, folks. 
So you would rather see a nice gradual build up than you want to see where in 2012 and you can say that sell in May. Well, we take a look at the tops that were put in in May, some put in in April. And now what the market is telling you or what the reporters, not, not Steve Rhodes, that's no way. What the folks are telling you is you just simply had one of the best uh, gains in 2012. To me, that's a terrible sign. That's not a good sign. That's no sign to celebrate. That's more conviction that what we're taking a look at, folks, is that 2007 down to 2009 leg. Whether or not we're going to see that type of leg or not, who knows? But you stay tuned. We're certainly going to set you straight here at TFNN.com. So, you know, whenever somebody gives you some information, you want to say, hmm, even if it's me, you want to say, hmm, you want to think about it, but go do the work yourself, folks. I always go do the work myself, and then I share that mostly with you folks out there. So love being here with you right now. you got the Dow futures up six, uh, S&P's up one and a half, NASDAQ up uh, six. Again, over in uh, Germany, they're having a good time. It's up uh, 73 points over the DAX. King dollar and the euro are saying there's something that's not making sense out there, folks. When we get back, we'll go take a look at it, as well as some of those folks that have released earnings in the pre-market. Folks like AutoZone, Best Buy, Cracker Barrel, China Sun Energy, Express Inc. We'll be right back, folks. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakouts gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shree's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look, fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You are born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. 
It's that time of year again, and the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway is back. Every day in June, Monday through Friday, we'll be giving away a Great Panther Silver 1-ounce silver bar, and all you have to do to enter is visit the front page of TFNN.com and fill out your entry. Great Panther Silver and TFNN wishing you a great start to the summer. Sign up today to have a chance to win a one-ounce silver bar during the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway the whole month of June at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. It's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. It absolutely is, folks. Welcome back, 877-927-6648. And the uh, first chart we're going to cruise over to is uh, King Dollar to take a look at the U.S. dollar index. And as I mentioned uh, in the first segment, uh, Friday was a two planetary index dates. Those don't happen very often, folks. In fact, 67 times in a 300-year period. Well, you know, 2012, get your volatility seatbelts on, folks. Uh, the next two planetary index date that we're going to see is October 6, 2012. Uh, today is a three planetary index date. You want to be aware of these dates, folks, because oftentimes they mark or are very near a, a change in trend. And when either the highs or lows are taken out, they're going to give you a good signal. The next three planetary index date that uh, we come across or the next planetary index date period is not until June, June 18th. 2012. Well, if you do take a look at King Dollar and just take a look at the high that was put in on Friday, May 18th, that was the high so far that you saw in King Dollar, a two planetary index date. You want to go ahead and mark that on your on your notes or what have you. That high out there being 8193. You take that out, folks, and I'm telling you that suggests uh, you know what we already know, which is the King wants to head to the moon. Uh, that is the high that's out there today. And or yesterday, if you take a look at today, you got the King trading out at 81.40, today being a 3P index date. Has the low been put in yesterday and or today? Maybe, folks. And what's that all about? Well, we know that's all about Europe. You think that the problems are solved over in Europe? You know, things are priced in dollars. And if the U.S. dollar is going up, it means the commodities are coming down in price. It means stocks are some stocks, uh, you know, and the indices are going to come down in price. And right now, if you take a look at the euro, the euro is still trading inside its swing point that goes all the way back to January 13th, 2012. Had a nice little two-day bounce, and now it's moving back down towards the bottom of that uh, swing point, the bottom of that range which also happens to be August 24th and 25th. That was a very huge planetary index configuration. Uh, these lows here get taken out, folks, and that is telling you the euro is uh, French toast. It'll take them all down out there in Europe. Now, let's go take a look at, uh, well, we have just a few minutes here. Let's go take a look at the uh, pre-markets and see what we have going on in the uh, pre-markets. How about AutoZone? AutoZone has absolutely been a high flyer, folks. If you go back into the uh, November 17th uh, area, November 24th area, you had AutoZone trading out at 92 bucks a share. You know, there's almost as many AutoZones as there are uh, Walgreens and uh, CVS stores around. Uh, not that many, but you sure do see a lot of uh, auto zones and uh, some of the other uh, competitors. I forget the names off the top of my head. Doesn't really matter. That thing has been flying. Of course, the biggest volume that you see inside AutoZone goes all the way back here into, uh, looks like, uh, March of 09. How about that? Somewhere right around March 4th, 5th of 09, doing 2 million shares out there. Well, AutoZone, folks, is going to open this morning. And they're going to open their last trade just fired off at 355.99. Uh, the low out there, the swing point, the B point happens to be 362. So it is going to uh, jump right over that. It is going to gap down. And if you take a look at AutoZone, it has only made, let's take a look at the retracement because it retraced basically for a day. If we go from the uh, top down to the uh, B point, the A point being the high out there on April 27th out of 399.10, the uh, B point. Uh, being uh, down at May, May 17th when it got down to 362.66. Does a point three eight two retracement. Folks, AutoZone, if you're in AutoZone, you may want to consider getting out of that high flyer. That is headed to, or let me tell you, the minimum pain that you're going to feel 
at the uh, at your pump. It's going to be three thirty one fifty more likely, though really three eighteen eighty five is the range, and at three eighteen eighty five takes you all the way back to January. So basically, what you're going to be looking at, uh, you know, when you take a look at where it's going to open this morning. It's going to go back to January 18th. It's now May 22nd, right? So what does that give you? Does that give you five months? So in essence, in a period of about uh, two weeks of trading, maybe two and a half weeks of trading, uh, it's going to go take back five months. And so I imagine we're going to see some now. Just take a look at the uh, earnings that are out here on AutoZone. See what uh, we've got there. Net sales, $2.1 billion versus uh, $1.98. Uh, net income 248 versus two. Let me just versus 227. You know, so not too bad. Uh, however, the uh, uh, must be the uh, forecast that they've got up and coming. And when you take a look at high flyers like that, the market is picking them off one at a time. Latest victim being AutoZone. Uh, so they're down about 3.4 percent right now in the uh, pre-market. You've got EXPR. They're down 21 percent. Express Inc. Express is that. Uh, let me see if that is EXPR. Is that the uh, clothing folks? EXPR after Ross Stores was up yesterday. Uh, yep, retail stores. They are getting hammered this morning. Last trade firing out at 1798. When we get back, we'll go see how these markets are going to move, folks. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations, including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insight subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? 
No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. Although no one's really getting out of the gate this morning. You got the Dow up six points, the S&P up three, composite up six, uh, small caps up uh, only 60 cents right now. Microsoft trading down 19 cents. You've got Intel up four, Google off 450, Cisco off eight cents, uh, Apple uh, up 11 bucks right now, uh, moving into some resistance in the 570-ish uh, range. Uh, you've got to the upside, you've got uh, Ralph Lauren Polo. Uh, this one, I'm not wearing one of my uh, polo shirts, although that's the name that you give pretty much every shirt like this that you uh, call. Ralph Lauren up 7% this morning, trading out right now at 156.71. Uh, Ralph Lauren, we're going to see if they're able to uh, hold these areas here. It uh, looks to me like nothing more than just a little bit of a bounce here. And, you know, Ralph Lauren, I've got the chart up here on my screen, and we're taking a look. It did gap up nicely on February 8th. Uh, it gapped up with volume, 5.7 million shares. The high out there was 178.47. Uh, that was a, a short-lived uh, area. Uh, in fact, uh, you got up a little bit higher on March the 14th, but only on 730,000 uh, shares, got up to 182.48. And uh, what you will notice here is uh, Ralph Lauren made one of Steve's hammer candles on May the 8th as it had gapped down. Now, when it gapped down, only had 2.7 million shares. Right now, Ralph Lauren is setting up a large A to B equals C, D down, folks. And uh, in that hammer candle here, when that low was taken out, that low was taken out on the uh, 15th of May. Uh, with 606,000 shares. That was signaling that lower prices were coming on Ralph Lauren. The market likes what it is that uh, Ralph Lauren is, uh, let's see, their net sales, 1.58 versus 1.4. Uh, revenues, 1. Point, uh, well, that was net sales. Ralph Lauren Q4 net revenues, 1.6 versus 1.4. Uh, about income, what they do on the income front here. 136 million in operating income. Where's their net income? Oh, I don't see the, uh, their operating income was 136 versus 117, but that doesn't mean as much uh, to me. Uh, so I don't see their net income. Uh, trading, uh, you know, trading out right now, 157.34. You've got uh, DSW Inc. I believe those are the shoe folks. DSW, uh, they have retail stores, so it's the retailers this morning that are doing well. They've, you've got the, the mix of two kinds of retails. You've got DSW and Ralph Lauren trading up in Apple. You can take a look at Apple being a retailer. Uh, DSW, they're trading up 8%, up $4.39. And you can move over to AutoZone. That's trading off a couple percent this morning. And Express uh, Inc., they're a retailer, EXPR, they're off 23%. So the tail of two stories, O'Reilly Automotive also down 2.5% out there. Let's go take a look at the DSW chart, see what it is doing here. DSW is the ticker symbol, and I'm pretty sure that's the uh, store. The, uh, let me see here, DSW. Make sure that that's what we're... Uh, DSW. Make sure that I'm talking about the uh, operates uh, branded footwear. So surely that is the... Uh, that is the uh, store, surely. Uh, what's, the, what's that uh, airplane uh, movie where it talks about surely? Anyway, so uh, DSW, I digress for a moment. $60.64, it's trading up near its highs. Let's pull this back here 
on a monthly chart. So this thing is catapulting. This is going to hit all, well, it already has hit uh, new highs out there on a uh, monthly uh, chart. Let's just take a look at some expansions that are out there. The expansion we'll go from is the swing point on the monthly chart for March uh, 31st, 2007. When it traded out at 44.71, all the way down to the lows that it put in in March of 2009, it's up above the 1.272. It says it's on its way to 1.618, so that would put it up in the $68 range. You're trading at 60 bucks uh, right now. Uh, from a monthly standpoint, it's uh, July of 2011 had 7.4 million shares so far for this month. 5.3 million shares should be able to see what it trades on a, a daily basis out here. Uh, let's see. Normally, this thing does about uh, 700,000, 500,000 shares. So may be able to uh, get up and catapult into that uh, 68 dollar area. If we go take a look at what is uh, dropping, let's go take a look at Express. And so the tail of two cities out there, uh, EXPR. And they're down at 1738. They gapped down this morning and they gapped down with a volume picking up to the upside. Nine minutes of trading and this thing has had a flat tire. Uh, they've got uh, two million shares out of it. Uh, it is below its last major uh, high volume uh, bar by a long shot. Uh, do not get in. Let's just take a look at this thing here. Let me make sure I can refresh this and go back as far as I can. So Express looks like it was a, a new IPO in uh, May 2010 when it uh, looks like it opened up somewhere around the 1740 area. You're trading at 1741 right now. How do you like that? It's taking back everybody's uh, money. Uh, that thing is uh, on its way. If we start, let me put this on a weekly chart out here. See what we're looking at as far as weekly volumes. Oh, that is an ugly looking weekly chart, isn't it, folks? And so we take a look at uh, this here. Well, I don't really have any good news for any of you that might be in uh, Express. Uh, it's headed down to the lows, $12.89. That is on EXPR. Uh, somebody wanted me to take a look at Limited Brands, LTD. I believe that is also a, uh, another, uh, you can tell I'm a big, huge shopper out there. So Limited Brands, they operate specialty retailer, women's uh, intimate and other apparel. Beauty and personal care products uh, in the United States and Canada, so all North America. Uh, let's go take a look at it, uh, LTD out here. See how they're doing this morning. They're trading out at 45.98. Uh, that's after coming down with some uh, pretty good volume on uh, the 17th. So that was last Thursday. Came down with uh, 6 million uh, shares. Uh, it has completed at least one A to B equals CD pattern. Let's go take a look at it off of the highs from May 3rd all the way down to the lows on May the 9th. It bounces up for a day. Does a .382 retracement, got down to 45.11. That was the one-to-one -one A to B equals C to D, but it wants to go further. It wants to go lower. Deeper is better. And when you take a look at limited brands, looks like they want to go uh, deeper as well. So they're going to go into their bullpen. Let's go take a look at the uh, daily chart out here. Uh, da not daily chart. Let's go take a look at the weekly chart. We were looking at the daily chart. Let's go take a look at the uh, weekly chart. The weekly chart, not too bad. Uh, has had a, a nice uh, steady, it looks like a number of A to B equals CD patterns on the way up. And now it looks like it's uh, going to be making A to B equals CD patterns on the way down. Looks like it's a uh, first area that it's going to run into of any kind of uh, support. It's probably going to be out at the 3720 area. Uh, let's put up the uh, monthly here and just get a better idea from a monthly chart standpoint where Limited Brands is uh, headed to. Refresh. And uh, that is going to be, eeks. okay, so uh, where Limited Brands would likely head to is actually to May 2007, uh, the high out there, 2930. It's trading out at 4596 right now. Uh, let's go take a look at, let's see what else is uh, popping and dropping in the uh, marketplace out here. And uh, so, I, you know, before we went into last break, what I did say was there was divergence. You know, and that divergence was with the uh, markets being up, with the uh, Germany uh, being up uh, nice and healthy. And if we go over and just around the world here, so you got Germany up, yet you got King Dollar up, you got the Euro down, and folks, something doesn't make sense. All that Germany is doing is really now just simply trying to test the October 28th swing point. It's trading inside that swing point. Well, no, my goodness. Let's, uh, let me make sure I give you the accurate information. Let's take a look at the low of that swing point. I thought that it was in there. Okay, it is. 
Here we go. Okay, so it's it's inside the October 28th, and our market's here. It's October 27th, so you know the bounce that I would expect out of our markets uh, is the uh, is into the October 27th area. That's where you'll get the next piece of information. The DAX is really doing the same thing. October 28th, the high out there is 64.3060. It's trading out right now at 63.96. It has gotten up to a high of 64. 14 today. So it is doing nothing more than a little bit of a bounce. It is uh, the, divi the divergence out there is simply the mere fact, as we pointed out early, the euro is weak. The euro trade enough only having a two day bounce. If we put the, uh, and the euro wants to go, folks, all the way back to August 2010. And if I put up the uh, weekly chart, I think those lines are in here. Surely they are. And uh, August 2010, uh, that is that two planetary index, that double configuration, that area here held the euro in the past. And the low on that is a 1.25861. You take out that area and it will be good night, Irene, for folks that are holding on to euros. Anybody want to, uh, anybody want uh, some euros out there? Uh, because they are selling them. And right now, you know, you're looking at the weekly chart. And when this thing, if this thing closes below 1.27784, uh, it absolutely is going to give you another signal it wants to go down and test the uh, bottom. So that's the divergence where we were taking a look at Europe being up. We were taking a look at our futures uh, being up. And there was absolutely some divergence out there uh, in the uh, marketplace. Uh, let's go see what else is continuing. Uh, let's go take a look at what's popping and dropping as opposed to looking at Facebook. Facebook trading down uh, five, another 5% out at 32.17. Hopefully none of you got into uh, Facebook. Let's go take a look at Cracker Barrel, CBRL. It's a uh, fun place to go get some uh, country ham if you like that stuff, CBRL. There's absolutely nothing healthy inside Cracker Barrel, that is for sure. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great restaurant, folks. But there's nothing healthy inside Cracker Barrel. Uh, uh, even their salads are a little bit, uh, you know, suspect. You can tell that salads are not the first thing on their mind. But doesn't matter. Their stock is doing well today. Cracker Barrel trading up. Uh, let's see how what percentage Cracker Barrel four percent right now out at sixty forty six. It has gapped up this morning. A pretty decent volume. We've done one hundred forty thousand shares. Uh, that's after yesterday doing a total of 257000 for the entire day. It's up over this uh, swing point here from February 21st. That had 1 million shares. The high on that is 59 bucks. Let's take a look at uh, Cracker Barrel. And uh, so you got a lot of people on the roads is what that would say. Not like the Steve Rhodes, but let's see what their earnings were. It must have had the earnings released this morning. So let's see here. What do they do? Cracker Barrel. Total revenue for fiscal 2012. I just want to know if it was up or not. Come here, folks. Help me out here. Let's pull this over. So they did between 2.5 and 2.6. That's what their estimates are. See, Q3 earnings per share, 86 cents, up 40, 48%. Not too bad at all. Uh, their Q3 total revenue, 608 million versus 582 net income, 39 million versus 31 and earnings per share 81 versus 64 cents. So that is one of the reasons that Cracker Barrel is up. If we take a look at any patterns that just quickly uh, point themselves out to us on a, a weekly chart, uh, we are looking at a big A to B equals CD up out here. Let's see what the swing point. Uh, so you're going to take a look at November 26, 2010, 57.79, 2 million shares out there on the weekly basis. That's what it needs to do this uh, week. It's not going to have that kind of volume at least not yet, uh, 2.1 million shares. Uh, and so they did 257,000 yesterday. So it's going to have to really get some uh, juice going. Maybe Cracker Barrel just will be hanging out here at its highs. Let's see. Somebody wanted me to take a look at FSLR, First Solar. Uh, and so we'll take a look at First Solar, FSLR. And uh, if I can punch that in here, right? FSLR. There we go. First solar trading out at 1340. You don't hear much about solar energy these days, do you folks? Kind of interesting. And uh, yikes, oh mighty. Nobody in first solar is having any fun. In fact, everybody is lost money. Everybody except maybe the last few trades today. Let's put this thing on a, a weekly chart. No, let's put it on a monthly chart. Okay, so we've got first solar now. It looks like this thing maybe came out in November 2006. Low there was 23.50. You're trading at uh, 13.40 uh, right now, and you're actually trading at the bottom. So absolutely, 
I think we are at the absolute low. Let me just refresh to see if that's really when they did uh, come out here. That's as far back as my records go. Look at that, folks. So there's a stock. Got to love it. There's a stock makes a high in May 2008 at uh, $317 even. Even Stephen, 317 Hopefully you're not a person that rode that down to $13.40, hoping that you're going to be, uh, this thing is going to go back to $317 someday, because surely it is not. Uh, let's go take a look at the uh, daily chart out there. And so, yeah, there are a few people who have some uh, profit. Those folks that bought it low at thirteen twenty one today have a nineteen cent profit in it. Don't uh, stick around and and uh, get into uh, first solar. Uh, at least I certainly can't uh, see getting into uh, first solar. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, what else? Benny Hanna. Have you been to a Benny Hanna restaurant? Well, they're up twenty one percent this morning. Where they have a buyout? Yes, there we go. Anglo Gordon to acquire Benny Hanna for sixteen thirty a share. Let's go take a look at Benny Hanna's. Uh, don't see that many on the uh, East Coast out here. Their uh, ticker symbol is uh, BNHN. BNHN. Uh, Benny Hanna's originally out of uh, Honolulu. I wonder if that's where they're still headquartered. I'm going to switch over to a different chart. Oh, that didn't work. Let me uh, actually pull over here. I just want to see where, where they are. Had BNHN, where they were headquartered out of. If it shows me this. Uh, it uh, doesn't say where they are headquarters. No, it doesn't say where they're headquartered on uh, my chart here. Might, it might say, I just can't see it. 877-927-6648. You got the uh, Dow relatively flat, up 37 cents right now, folks. We'll be right back. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary perspective contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of this opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. 
At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. I should get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? Well, I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off us? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we weighed of that was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. Catch Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. The Money Masters, next on TFNN. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. Welcome back, folks. Uh, you got the uh, Dow up 11 points, uh, S&P's up 5, Composite up 9, Small Cap's up uh, 2, and uh, it is Terrific Tuesday. That means we do have the Money Master Show, Tom and I, in the uh, next segment. Then we go all the way out to Santa Fe to Kate Stalter, as we do each Tuesday for the Small Cap Roundup. And then up to Chicago to Victor Jones, the one and only Options Hour, commercial-free, uninterrupted. And then on Tuesdays, we crisscross these United States. We go all the way back out to California to Ken Shreve from 3 to 4, the warm-up band for the Tom O'Brien Show. If we take a look at Apple, Apple gapping up this morning, uh, trading out right now at 570.65. Uh, it is uh, headed into some resistance overhead. So as your pilot, I'm putting on the uh, fasten your seatbelt sign because there's a little turbulence overhead. What turbulence am I talking about? I'm talking about when Gapple, Gapple. How about that? How about when Apple gapped up on March the 14th? The low of that gap is a 575.40. Now, volume that you did there was 50 million shares. Yesterday, after a nice move, helping to move the markets on this counter trend bounce, uh, you had Apple do 22.5 million shares. That's after on Friday making a low with 26 million shares uh, so far today in trading. And we have only been trading for 25 minutes. The volume we've got inside Apple, 5 million shares. It normally starts off with a, with a bang. And then during the day, just kind of, uh, you know, cruises along. But take a look at Apple. You're going to want to be paying attention to Apple as a, a next point of reference for uh, for being able to get into a, a short in the marketplace. Why? Because the NASDAQ led things up, uh, the NDX 100 leading things down. And so be paying attention to uh, what Apple does as it gets into this uh, swing point. You close inside 574 575.40 today sets up a test of the high of that uh, gap day, May, uh, March 14th, the high there, 594.72. We'll see if Gapple, renamed, if Apple, gapping up today, wants to uh, do that. If we go take a look at that price line, see what PCLN is uh, doing out there. That is the uh, leading the charge dollar-wise on the way up this, uh, this morning. Price line trading out. Uh, up 11 bucks. That's up 1.7 percent. And uh, what uh, it is also doing is coming up into looks like April 24th. I don't know why I have that point uh, marked all that because that was the B point on the way down. So we do know that it it had a, a swing point on the way down. So it broke that swing point on a daily basis. Broke that swing point on a, a weekly basis. And now it is just let's go ahead and put this on the weekly basis now. Let's take a look at what that price line is doing. Price line just simply trying to get up into the bottom of that swing point for May 11th. Uh, it did 10.5 million shares. The bottom there being 670.02. Uh, it has traded as high this week as 671.77. And I said 670.02. You're trading out right now at 668.98. Uh, so that is, uh, that is on the price line. Let's go take a look at the uh, ETFs. Let's go see what we have going on volume-wise out there. Uh, ETF, uh, let's put up, if I can find it, 
There we go. We are on the ETF 10 minute chart. I just got it covered by Apple and Priceline. Okay. So let's take a look at the uh, small caps. The small caps were on a tear yesterday, uh, being, uh, being one of the uh, leaders out there now. Uh, that is just simply closing a gap. That did it. Again, we're taking a look at a 10 minute chart. Let me just refresh this screen here just to make sure. Let's see here. No, it wasn't just closing the gap. That's why I like to refresh the screen. So if we take a look at from the highs, well, there's a number of swing points out there. Let's just take a look at the AB equals CD up on the 10-minute chart after making a beautiful hammer out there. Looks like one of Steve's hammers. That was a hammer that came in at 10 o'clock on the 21st yesterday. Folks, stay tuned. Tom and I will be up next. Then we go to Kate Stalter. Have a terrific uh, Tuesday. And if you are uh, be safe today, if I don't uh, see you in the next hour, look forward to seeing you around morning, 9 o'clock. Take care, folks.